Okay. So this can't possibly be as bad as everyone makes it out to be. Right? Oh, man. Only one way to find out. Hello, and welcome to Boots to Reboots. Today we'll be taking a look at a remake I never wanted to see. A movie considered to be one of the worst remakes ever. You really have to see it to believe it. And then when you do, you wish bees were stinging your eyes out. Today I'll be looking at the 2006 remake of The Wicker Man, starring Nicolas Cage. Oh God. The original Wicker Man from 1973 was directed by Robin Hardy, written by Anthony Schaefer and based on the 1967 novel Ritual. Since the original is labeled as the Citizen Kane of horror films, why the hell would you want to remake it? I mean, the original is good, not the greatest horror film ever, but you'll definitely remember it. Not that the remake is forgettable. I don't think I'll ever be able to forget. The main character in the original Wicker Man is Sergeant Neil Howey, played by English actor Edward Woodward. He's an uptight, by-the-book police officer and is a very religious man who is engaged to be married. We never see his fiancée, he never speaks to her. We only pick up fragments about who he is here and there and in flashbacks. The movie jumps right into the plot, so we meet him while he's arriving by plane to Summer Isle. He is a pretty simple character. He's like a shark, simply on a mission to find Rowan Morrison, who's missing. In the remake, Nicolas Cage plays Sheriff Edward Malice, who travels from California to the island to find Rowan Woodward. The name changes being a nod to actor Edward Woodward. Maybe you spotted him on the missing person poster in the police station. Unlike the original, we meet Edward prior to him visiting the island. I have a feeling everything is not going to be okay. The film opens with Edward saving a little girl's doll and giving it back. We need to be careful with our things, don't we? So everyone else can be safe too, right? Edward, don't you pick it up again. Ah, she made you her bitch. Yeah, so Nicolas Cage's character in this movie has suffered a traumatic experience. He tries saving the little girl, but... Later, a female officer arrives at Cage's house to deliver some news. Hey. Um. Uh. Say something? Maybe, maybe some exposition? This is where you say lines. Come on, progress the story! Jesus! The main purpose of that awkward scene is to learn that no bodies were found at the scene of the accident and they don't know who the girls were. Cage also gets an unposted letter from his former fiance, Willow. Her daughter Rowan is missing and she needs him to come to the island and find her. Malice is very different from Howie. First off, we don't know if Malice is religious or not. In the original, we find out that Howie doesn't even believe in sex before marriage. I thought you were gonna come and see me last night. I invited you. It's nothing personal. Just that I don't believe in it. Before marriage. Suit yourself. Well, in the remake, Willow reveals to Edward that Rowan is his daughter. 
No. I don't know. I do not know that our daughter is going to be okay. <gasps> hmm. I'm surprised she doesn't look more like this. If you've been paying attention, this big reveal really isn't that shocking. Ray Charles could see it coming a mile away. And you know, he's dead. But it just goes to show how different Howie and Malice are. In the original, the Scottish island is known as Summer Isle. In the remake, the island is moved from Scotland to off of Washington State. The name has also been changed to Summer's Isle. The producers did this because they thought it would be easier for Americans to pronounce. Really? It's like one letter. Why are they always dumbing things down for American audiences? Are... Are we really that dumb? Transformers rated PG-13. Yes, we are that dumb. So the remake's neo-pagans differ because they're mostly female. The only men we see are those guys with the sack, the guys loading logs, and Sister Beach. We see more males towards the end of the film, but they're all suspiciously mute. Can't you talk? Some pagan characters that stand out are the landlord, the landlord's daughter, Rowan's mother Mae Morrison, and the caretaker. In the remake, the landlord is replaced by Sister Beach, and the landlord's daughter has been replaced by another pretty blonde, Sister Honey. When you leave, will you take me with you? Please, the Burger King here sucks. Sister Honey is played by Lillian Rudabet Gloria. Huh. I think her name is broken. And although we'll try, let's not forget Malice's old teary eyed girlfriend, Weeping Willow. I hate your face! But what about the cult leader? In the original, we have Lord Summer Isle. The role is played by Dracula, Count Dooku, Saruman, and heavy metal singer himself, Christopher Lee. Lee actually worked on the movie for free as a passion project. That and the budget was so small they couldn't afford to pay him his usual rate. He isn't in the movie that much, but he steals the show. Lee considers it to be one of his better roles. He's able to showcase his acting ability, and that golden voice. Famate says he, your kettle's cracked. The cause is plain, they told. There hath so many nails been drove. Mine own could not take hold. If you're female, you're now pregnant. In the remake, since the island is female dominated, the pagan leader has been changed to Sister Summer's Isle. The new version isn't bad. She plays her part, but she doesn't do or say anything that leaves a lasting impression. Well, at one point, she does look like Braveheart's grandmother. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! It's no contest. Lee is definitely the better of the two versions. One big difference in the remake is the lack of music. It plays out as an average horror movie, so this portion really only applies to the 1973 version. For the first 30 minutes of the original, you sit there and go, Oh no. Is this movie trying to be a musical? I know which song was my favorite. My God! What are you doing to the furniture? The music is actually one of the few parts that bothered me in the original. What the hell is that? In the woods there grew a tree And a fine, fine tree was he And on that tree there was a limb And on that limb there was a branch And on that branch there was a nest And in that nest there was an egg And in that egg there was a bird And from that bird a feather came And of that feather was Oh, it's nice to see that Randy put a shirt on uh... 
Two songs alone play during the opening credits. The song Corn Rigs randomly pops up throughout the movie. Some action or dialogue will be happening, and then the movie takes a break to play 10 seconds of the song and fade out. It's distracting at first, but because it's a little odd, it gets funnier each time it happens. I'm surprised there isn't a Corn Rigs drinking game. Oh, come on, man. It was only eight months ago. Surely you remember who was that girl or not? Uh, oh, God. Not again. What's with this damn song? Uh, uh. In the original, Sergeant Howie's investigation is frustrating because at first, the Islanders say they've never seen Rowan before. Then they say they have seen her. They say she was a bunny. Then they say she's dead. Eventually, on the day of the festival, the landlord and his daughter try to put a spell on Howie to make him sleep. Hey, I think I saw that same candle at Ikea. Howie fights the landlord and steals his fool costume. He sneaks into the festival and finally sees Rowan Atkinson. He rescues her and they escape through the cave, but Rowan leads Howie right into Summer Isle's trap. Did I do it right? You did it beautifully! We find out that the island's apple harvest failed miserably and they needed a greater sacrifice. In comes Howie, described as the right kind of adult, a king slash officer who came of his own free will, a religious man, a virgin, a fool. They attack Howie, stuff him in the wicker man, and light him up. The film ends with this beautiful shot of the wicker man's head toppling over with the sunset behind it. It's not a happy conclusion, and it does leave some questions. Do the police come searching for Howie? Does the harvest fail again and they need an even greater sacrifice? Howie even suggested they sacrifice Lord Summer Isle at one point if the crops fail. Or even worse, what if the harvest is prosperous? Because then the islanders will have this false sense that they were right, and then they'll never change their beliefs. The remake's plot is pretty similar to the original. Certain names and events are slightly different, but for the most part it's 70% the same movie. However, the new version is so absurd it's unintentionally funny, and the new scenes they added make the overall story confusing. It is your destiny. Back up! In the beginning you're like, why does this movie get so much hate? And then towards the end you're like, oh. It's the day of the festival, Edward hasn't found Rowan yet, and is afraid she'll be sacrificed. So the last half hour of this movie is a frantic Nicolas Cage running all over this island, resulting in shenanigans. What? Get off the bike. Get off the bike. Step away from the bike. Hey, take those masks off. Hey, Come here. How to get burned? How to get burned? I, how to get burned? How to get burned? Fire. One of my favorite parts is when he doesn't speak a word and just knocks out Sister Beach. I'm sure he'll be okay. Then Sister Honey gets jabbed in the face and karate kicked into the wall. Don't worry, he karate kicks more people. So Edward steals Sister Beach's costume and joins the festival. I told you to wait for me. Look, dear, that bear swallowed Nicolas Cage. He eventually finds Rowan about to be burned at the stake in the woods. Oh, good God. Oh. 
Only you can prevent forest fires. Ugh. It's hard for the brain to digest all this. Within three minutes, I've seen a bar fight and Nicolas Cage in a bear suit assaulting even more women. He even left down the little bear feet. So we get to the part where it's all a trap and we find out that Willow is Sister Summer's Isle's daughter. My daughter speaks the truth. Your daughter? Yes. My Willow. And now it gets really confusing. The women reveal that they brought him there to be sacrificed because of the poor honey production the previous year, one of the few times it ever failed. They picked him because of his blood link to the island, so why not use one of those other men on the island? Don't be afraid. Uh. Also, they say that Willow picked him years ago and everything had been carefully planned from the beginning. So Willow picked Edward roughly seven years ago, when the honey was fine, had a kid with him, just so he could be sacrificed one day on the off chance that the honey production is bad? But then a couple of the islanders take off their mask and you see the mom and daughter from the car wreck and the female officer he works with. So was the car wreck staged just to fuck with Edward's head? What? To top it off, they had a mole at the police station in another state? Did they find a cop in Brainwasher, or did they actually send one of the islanders to the police academy just to work at the same station in California? Jesus. Maybe if you gave your honey this much attention, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. I have all these questions and I'm trying to find reason, but it's pointless. You can't make sense of something that's illogical. It's like they wanted to keep the ending to the original, but also wanted to mix in their new ideas as well, but the pieces don't fit properly. Six months later, we find Jason Ritter and James Franco, of all people, in a bar. The movie ends with Sister Willow and Honey picking them up, presumably to do the same thing they did with Edward. So did sacrificing Edward fail and they need another guy? Or are they just baiting another fool just in case the Honey production fails in another five years? I don't know. I don't know, and I stopped giving a shit. However, the unrated version has a different ending. That's right, the remake was cut down to a PG-13 so a wider audience could see the movie. Too bad the movie sucked and was a flop. The unrated version shows Edward's legs being broken Annie Wilk style. <laughs> and then... They bust out... The Bee Helmet. Uh, 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 no, don't! Don't move it! Ah! What, uh, what is it? What is it? What, what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Oh, no, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! <laughs> my mind has been blown. The awful CGI in Nicolas Cage's over-the-top performance has created one of the worst, yet funniest things I have ever seen. Bees everywhere! God, they're huge! They're ripping my flesh off! It also doesn't feature that awful and further confusing bar scene before the credits. The remake was nominated for five Razzie Awards, including Worst Actor, Worst Remake, and Cage in the Bear Suit as Worst Couple. But the remake of The Wicker Man is reaching cult status as a film that's so bad that it's good, kind of like Troll 2 or The Room. I feel that the remake's writer and director Neil LeBute left out a very important part of the Wicker Man. In the original, the pagans use Howie's religious beliefs against him. They tempt him and test him. While in the remake, they just trick some idiot. Plain and simple, they removed the religious elements, dumbed it down, and threw in a love interest for American audiences. The original was a battle between Christian and pagan beliefs. You can tell that that place just gets under Howie's skin and it's his own personal hell. While Lord Summerisle explains his pagan beliefs, how he becomes so offended that he stands up and strikes him for his blasphemy. What? Okay, so he doesn't really hit him. But man, I thought he was. I mean, if Malice isn't religious and you're not testing his faith, then why give him the runaround? What's with the overly complicated plan? Just bonk him on the head when he first arrives and kill him. Hmm, let's see. A cop traveling to a weird community that's ruled by a cult. Hell, Hot Fuzz is a better remake. 
Hey, wait a minute. Come to think of it, Edward Woodward is actually in Hot Fuzz. Oh, God, no. It may have some funny moments, but the remake is a very inferior version of the original Wicker Man. Therefore, it's getting the boot. Don't worry, you'll never be able to hurt anyone ever again. This has been Boots to Reboots. Thanks for watching.